let's join Ayotunde Balogun for sports news. assistant referees are set to be used at this year's FIFA World Cup in Russia after football's lawmakers voted to approve the technology. VAR has been tested in some domestic English Cup games this season and has been used in Germany and Italy. The International Football Association board unanimously approved its introduction on a permanent basis after a meeting in Zurich today. Leagues and competitions must now apply to IFAB to implement the system. An academic analysis which was very very thorough and at the end of the day the results of all these experiments and studies were conclusive and we came to the conclusion that VAR is good for football is good for refereeing it brings more fairness in the game from the thousand matches that were approximately 1,000 matches, live matches that were a part of the experiment, the level of accuracy of the decision taken by the referees, which was without VAR 93%, which is already excellent, increased to 99%. It's not 100%. 99%, however, of decisions which, thanks to VAR, were corrected. And this is obviously positive. Mexico's Football Federation President Dicchio De Maria has resigned and will leave his post after the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Dicchio De Maria had been in charge of the Mexican Federation since August 2015 after moving over from the Premier Football League presidency. The 46-year-old was president of the organizing committee for the 2011 Under-17 World Cup, as well as fulfilling different director roles at Mexican Giants Club America. Burnley has ended a run of 11 Premier League matches without a win by coming from behind to beat Everton 2-1. Algeria international Riyad Mahrez scored a late equaliser to snatch a dramatic draw for Leicester against Bournemouth. Swansea moved out of the relegation zone as they comfortably dispatched West Ham to seal a seventh consecutive home win. Son Hyung Min scored both goals as Tottenham moved one point behind second place Manchester United with a comfortable win over Huddersfield Town, while Liverpool scored two goals against Newcastle as they won 2 0 at Anfield in the last game of the day. And that's a wrap on sports news. The news at 10 continues shortly. Burkina Faso Prime Minister Paul Kabateva today toured the army headquarters and French embassy in the capital Ouagadougou a day after gunmen killed at least 16 people. The assailants attacked several targeted, uh, including the army headquarters and French embassy, in a coordinated assault. It's the third major assault on Ouagadougou in just over two years. Gunmen launched twin attacks on the army headquarters, French embassy and its environs on Friday, shooting indiscriminately at passers-by. Explosions rocked the scene, setting buildings on fire and sending up thick column of black smoke as panic-stricken residents fled the city center on foot and motorbikes, while dozens of Burkina Faso special forces and armed vehicles took up positions. President Roch Mark Christian Kabori, deeply saddened, has encouraged the security and defense forces to stop the enemies of the nation. Nothing, absolutely nothing, can justify such a senseless persecution against the Burkina Bay state, its institutions, the valorous population that loves peace, democracy, justice and progress. According to the defense minister, three assailants were killed at the army headquarters and four at the embassy, while two have been apprehended. Residents are left to wonder how their country has remained vulnerable to such attacks after a raid in January 2016 claimed by Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. Burkina Faso had a failed coup in 2015. 
The trial for dozens of the alleged perpetrators began early this week, but was suspended after defense lawyers walked out in protest against the military court. Le Burkina Faso a été victime. French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian said there was no doubt it was an act of terrorism. Security has been beefed up and people have been asked to remain vigilant. West Africa's arid Sahel region is suffering a spike in violence by militant groups, some with links to Al-Qaeda and Islamic State, while some others attributed to their allies. At least 36 pro-Syrian government troops have been killed by Turkish airstrikes in Afrin. According to a monitoring group, the strike targeted a camp at Kafr, Gina, in the northern Syrian region. The pro-government troops fighting Turkish military offensive entered Afrin two weeks ago to back Kurdish forces. The Syrian government has, however, denounced the offensive as a blatant attack on its sovereignty. Eight Turkish soldiers were killed and another 13 were injured on Thursday in Afrin. Thousands of civilians in Afrin have fled their homes since Turkish offensive began in January. And the main news again, at least four persons were today said to have been killed as fresh violence erupted between farmers and herdsmen over land dispute in Mambila Plateau, Taraba State. It was gathered that the clash which started in Nguroji village on Thursday spread to neighboring villages. Also today, parents of the school girls abducted by insurgents from Government Girls Science and Technical College in Dabchi, Yobe State, alleged neglect by the government and said no one is talking to them. And at least 36 persons were today killed following a Turkish airstrike targeting pro-Syrian government troops in Afrin, northern Syria. And that's how it's been on the news at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for being a part of it. On behalf of everyone here, have a splendid night, friends. Good night.